Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Just stunning. Feeling very, very lucky. gorgeous <laughs> thank you so much to the lovely person who sent me these beautiful flowers they make me so happy while I won't share who actually sent it I can tell you that the card said if ever there was a spring day so perfect which really is the perfect thing to write on a card when the month is September It's also a line from a poem. Heading now into the weekend, I went with a friend of mine down to um, Lawn, I guess you can say, or more down to Apollo Bay, stopping along the way to uh, have a cup of coffee at a beautiful cafe, which has a John Lennon mural in the back room. It's such a lovely day to be out in rural Victoria. On the way, we also saw some beautiful spring lambs. They are just roaming around, frolicking in the sun. It's such a cute sight to see. It reminds me a lot of a book I read back in Year 7, many, many moons ago now, called Tess of the D'Urbervilles. It's actually a really sad book and it's really quite haunting and it stayed with me for years on end. The book is written by Thomas Hardy and it's set in rural England. It basically tells the story of a young woman, Tess, who comes from a poor family objectified, harassed and pursued by an old man with much more wealth and power over her. The most quotable quote from the book is more sinned against than the sinner. My friends and I decided to stop over at a chestnut tree farm. It's such a pretty farm. The trees fan out right into the sky and reminds me so much of my time about three or four years ago now in Tokyo and in Osaka. Once again, a beautiful part of the world, the Lake of Shining Waters. Not sure about you, but every time I travel into um, a town in the rural Victoria, I always try and buy something from their bakery. Here we are at last in Apollo Bay, probably one of my favorite coastal towns. It's such a nice beach. I think it uh, has a Italian heritage, so says a friend of mine. And it's nice to step out on the sand and see the sweeping view. Time now to head back home to Melbourne. It's been such a wonderful day, a very busy one. And look at these fields of what? Daffodils? There'll be a poem soon, watch. Time to put these beautiful flowers into water. If ever there were a spring day so perfect, so uplifted by a warm intermittent breeze, that it made you want to throw open all the windows in the house and unlatch the door to the canary's cage, indeed rip the little door from its jam, a day when the cool brick paths and the garden bursting with peonies seemed so etched in sunlight that you felt like taking a hammer to the glass paper weight on the living room end table, releasing the inhabitants from their snow-covered cottage so they could walk out holding hands and squinting into this larger dome of blue and white. Well, today is just that kind of day. It's an interesting poem, isn't it? And I love the part where he says, a day when the cool brick paths and the garden bursting with peonies seem so etched in sunlight. That's just so lovely. It paints a lovely photo. But then he goes in and does a violent thing by taking a hammer to an innocent glass paperweight. Um, I do appreciate the idea of, um, I don't know, an assimile device in this poem where it talks about the dome of the glass paperweight being akin to the dome of the sky. I mean, that's pretty clever. Um, but it's an interesting pivot to the poem, I guess, when it started off so beautifully. Um, still, I love that line, if ever there were a spring day so perfect. And the fact that someone was poetic enough to write that on a card um, 
on the first few days of spring and I mean that's pretty cool. Since it looks like I have more footage of me arranging flowers, which I think is probably my favourite pastime, it's a, actually a very soothing thing for me to do, I will now offer up one of my favourite poems. It's called I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lake beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. Continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the Milky Way, they stretched in a never-ending line along the margin of a bay. Ten thousand saw I at a glance, tossing their heads in sprightly dance. The waves beside them danced, but they outdid the sparkling waves in glee. A poet could not but be gay in such a jokesome company. I gazed and gazed, but little thought what wealth the show to me had bought. For oft, when on my couch I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. That's just so cute, really. I think the last paragraph is completely relatable. Off now to St Kilda Market. If you are a visitor to Melbourne, you must try and do the St Kilda Market, which um, operates on a Sunday. It's a nice uh, sort of market to walk along and you can also go to the beach as well. If you are going to go to St Kilda Market, you must visit the Acklam Cake Shop, home of my favourite vanilla slice. I think Sorrento might have the other vanilla slice that I love, but this one is a must. Back in the office, I have to say that I really do appreciate going to work and having this view right before my eyes. It is such a great city, Melbourne. I love it. Um, it is, of course, my hometown, and it is um, the city that has won multiple awards, I think perhaps 11 years in a row for being the most livable city in the world. It is the most locked down city in the world as well during the pandemic, um, but that's okay because now we are emerging from the ashes. And when I think about my hometown of Melbourne, I mean, it is a very, layered city there's so much to do um, you can go to cafes you can go to the beach you can go to restaurants there's fashion which is not the same as fashion anywhere in australia i think it's more european therefore a little bit more sophisticated maybe although my sydney friends could maybe not talk to me after this video A morning out with my kid number two. Wow. Really, that's it. <laughs> Is it cringy? And that was the most Instagrammable cake in the world. Ah, I love Hamer Hall. I think the Hamer Hall is like one of the most iconic cultural centres in, in Melbourne for sure. It has been a um, place where I have seen many musicals including West Side Story and I have been to a lot of my children's um, college concerts here. Today I'm watching my child number one play in a very elite, not very elite but I think elite. Um, orchestra and um, for privacy reasons I won't say what it is but let's just say that I'm really happy to be here supporting him in fact I am so keen that I'm the very first person in
bravo. I might be biased, but I think that was pretty good. And I really like the conductor's um, work as well. Well done, everybody. So cool. Well, that's it from me this week, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate your time. Um, I'm going to leave you with a beautiful sunset, which is always very inspiring. And I hope that you will come back here next week when I will post another video. I've been thinking of posting like two videos a week. I'm not too sure yet, in which case I'll post one on Wednesday and one on Friday. Let me know in the comment section if you would like me to do that. Um, I might just do it anyway, but um, anyway, I'll think about it. <laughs> Until next time, have a really lovely night or day. And I hope you can subscribe to this channel and um, comment and like as well. Bye for now. Thanks for stopping by.